using the tables, we have to remember two very important things. First of all, the curve is symmetric. In this case, symmetric about zero, which is the mean. And secondly, that the total area is equal to one. And if you remember those two facts, have them firmly ingrained in your mind, then you can use tables to find this integral for any values of A and B. And if, when you found the area, those give you the probabilities that you need to work out uh, certain facts. So we can use the previously stated properties, that is to say the curve is symmetric about the mean, in this case zero, and the total area is one. And we can use tables then to find these areas for any values of A and B, and then when we've got the areas, those correspond to probabilities. So we're going to talk about using tables. It's worth pointing out at this point that um, statistical tables will vary a little bit depending on who's published them, what their source is, and so on. And it's worth getting familiar with the tables that you have to use, particularly in an exam, um, before you come to the exam, knowing the layout of the tables and how to find the bits you need. Um, so what we have here is a simple example of using tables. Now, most tables will usually, not all of them, but they usually tabulate the area below a limit. And so here's a picture with the shaded region um, showing the area of interest. In this case, it's the area up to the value 1. So this is the area from minus infinity up to 1 under the curve. And what tables will show you are the areas up to uh, values going from 0 up to round about 4, often in increments of 0.01. So you'll find the area up to 0, which of course we will know, because we know the total area is 1 and it's symmetric. So one half and the other half, they're the same. They both add up to 1, so each half is area a half. So without looking at tables, we know the area up to the value 0 is going to be a half. And that's worth just as a landmark when you're looking at the tables to see you've identified that point. So here's an example, and you might want to look at your own tables just to verify you get this answer. So if we take the value z to be 1.0, then the area, often denoted with a capital phi, the function of 1, the area up to the value 1, in this case, 0.84. 1, 3, 4. So you may have tables which round that down, maybe to 8, 4, 1, or maybe they give you more decimal places. And this, of course, is not an exact value. It's going to go on with many more decimal places if you want uh, to find them out. So that's one example, very simple, where you, for any value of z uh, in this range from about 0 to 4, you can find the area up to, let's say from minus infinity, up to that point. If you have a value of z which is somewhere between two numbers, so for example 0 0.005, then you can see what phi of 0 is, and you can see what phi of 0 0.01 is, and you can do some sort of interpolation between them. So usually a linear interpolation will be fine. Um, I'm not really going to talk about that, but it's easy enough to do. Here's another example. So in this case, we've picked a value 1.95, which again will be within our... Uh, standard tabled values, so it comes within this range, and now we have an area up to 1.95 of 0.9744. And it's worth noting what's in the unshaded area. Okay, remember the total curve is 1. The shaded area, 0.9744, that means the unshaded area is 1 minus 0.9744, so 0 0.0 two, five, six. So roughly two and a half percent is in that end tail. If we were to make the shaded area symmetric, that would mean we've chopped off two and a half percent in one tail and two and a half percent in the other tail, which would leave 95 percent in the middle. So just as I said at the beginning, within three standard deviations, you've got about 99.7 percent, here we have a result that says within about two standard deviations, we have about 95% of the area. So there's another thing that's worth 
sort of keeping it in the back of your mind for a normal distribution of what would be a typical value to get um, from normally distributed data. Tables can also be used to provide the inverse function. Sometimes this is the same table, and sometimes it's a separate table. And I'm going to um, really deal with the case where it's a separate table. What we're talking about here is, instead of given a value, and we want to find the area, we're now saying we're given an area, and we want to find how far along we have to in order to get that area. So, take it from an example again. Supposing we're told we have to find the value along here such that the area is going to be 0.7. Now, of course, I've shaded this knowing the answer, but it's always a good idea to draw a quick picture to see um, you're getting sensible values. So, here's a shaded area which I'm supposing to be known and given at 0.7. So, here we are. We're given that phi of some value z is 0.7. Another way of expressing that is that the standard normal random variable capital Z being less than this little z is 0.7. And sometimes people write the other way around because the total area is 1. It means the probability of being bigger than that value is 0.3. So we then have to look in the tables to see what value of little z is required in order to get phi of z to be 0.7. So in a way, what we're doing is we're saying z is the inverse phi of 0.7, which is why we can think about this as the inverse function. And again, looking at tables, and it's worth checking, you can find this in your own tables, is that the answer is that z is 0.5244. OK, and I've drawn a little bar there. So the area to the left of 0.5244 is 0.7, and the area to the right of it is <coughs> 0.3. I'm going to finish by looking at a few more complicated worked examples. Before we look at specific details, just three things to remember. First of all, it's always a good idea to draw yourself a little sketch. It doesn't have to be terribly accurate, but it helps you to give a bit of confidence that you've got a number that's in about the right value. So remember, under the curve, total area is 1. So if you're looking at half of it, then you should get a value around about a half. And similarly, between minus two standard deviations and plus two standard deviations, you've got about 95% of the area. So um, a little sketch often helps to avoid mistakes, particularly at the end if you look at the value of your final answer. Second thing to remember, and you need this most of the time, if not all the time, is that the, the curve is symmetric about zero. That's the mean. And the total area under the curve is one. So First example, if a standard normal, Z, has got mean 0 and standard deviation 1, find the probability that Z lies between minus 2 and plus 1. So here's a picture, which you might have as a sketch. Of course, again, I've drawn this more accurately with a computer, but any sketch will do, remembering that minus 2 is bit to the left of 0 and 1 is not quite as much to the right of it. First thing to note is that the probability z is between minus 2 and 1 can be expressed as the probability z is less than 1 minus the probability z is less than minus 2. So what we've done is we've taken this interval which goes from 1 to minus 2 and we've said that area is equal to the area which goes right the way up to 1 and then we subtract the area that comes up to minus 2. So we've broken it down into two areas which we can subtract to get the area we want. Also we can notice the probability z less than minus 2 which we won't find in the tables that probability is equal to the probability z is greater than or equal to 2. And of course, if we take this expression on the left here and we simply multiply both sides by minus 1, then the sign of the equality changes. We get the probability minus z bigger than 2, and z and minus z have the same distribution, so the same probability. So by symmetry, and again, you can see it by looking at the area, you cut off one tail, 
It's the same as the area if you cut off the other tail. So the third step, the sort of preliminary, is the probability z is bigger than 2 is 1 minus the probability z is less than 2. So the total area here is 1. So in order to find this end probability here, we've used these two steps in order to, to get a probability z less than 2, which we will find in the tables. And of course, if you're quick, you can do it in one step and get there in the end. So now we put it all back together. This probability of interest, z less than 1, minus probability z less than minus 2. So the probability z less than 1 minus, and then we're substituting 1 minus the probability z less than 2 in here. So then we use tables to find out the components. So probability z less than 1 is 0.8413 minus 1 minus minus, so plus the probability z less than 2. So again, these two n numbers come directly from the tables, and then we add them all together, we get 0.8185. And looking back at our original picture, that's a number we can, we can believe. It's not something we could say exactly, but we can see the answer is going to be somewhere between maybe 0.6 and 0.9, depending on our confidence and how good our picture is. But if we've got a value less than a half, we'd be suspicious um, and had a right, a right answer. And of course, you get a value outside the range of 0, 1, then we'd know we've made a mistake somewhere because you can't get probabilities outside that range. <laughs>